your celebration of the literary arts here in Saskatchewan. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome our guest, Jeanette Lines. Jeanette is an award-winning poet and novelist. She is the director of the MFA in Writing Program at the University of Saskatchewan. She was recently announced as the winner of the Muslims for Peace and Justice Fiction Award at the Saskatchewan Book Awards for her new book, The Small Things That End the World. Jeanette, welcome to What Happens. Thank you so much, Janika. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm so glad you're finally on the show. There are, there are authors that, I, that, will, that I've been able to talk to a few times, and you have had some really interesting books come out over the last few years, so, so I'm just so pleased that you're here today. Oh, well, thank you. I'm happy to be here. So we, um, we'll talk a little bit about, about your new book, but I think a lot of people know you even better as a poet than as a novelist. So can you tell me a little bit about your poetry just before we get into the novel? I did start out um, uh, writing poetry uh, quite intensively for, gosh, probably now um, going on about about 20 years. Uh, and just it was kind of odd. I just sort of woke up one day and I, I, I teach literature and, and writing. And I, I've always loved uh, teaching poetry, but also fiction. And I, I just decided I kind of in a moment of hubris perhaps I've been I've been teaching novels for years and what would it be like to try to write one so I I kind of made the slide over but I also I also continue to write poetry um, as well and, and I, I do find that it um, it actually feeds into fiction in, in certain respects that are that are fun and helpful well and, and I think one of the the lovely things that that I notice when I'm reading a book that is written by someone who I've also read some of their poetry is there's there's a rhythm and a voice that that is maybe a little bit more melodic or um, it, it it just you you can sort of feel that when you read a novel that a poet has read. I, I do find that as well, and I, it might be what you've identified, uh, Danica, about just the, you know this this engagement with the sonics of the this just the sounds and um, you know all the all the all the things that poets nerd out on, right? Like the assonance and assonance and alliteration and and all that all those beautiful things that um, are fun to bring to bear on a, on a fiction project as well. And, and really, uh, sort of the elements of a love of language. Yes, yes. And, and I think fiction writers certainly have that, but perhaps poets, uh, maybe, maybe, we're, maybe we're frustrated musicians, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's, there's, there is a certain thing about perhaps um, novels written by poets, yes. So would you like to read us just oh, a little bit from your novel? Sure. Um, I'll just read from the um, beginning of the novel. Um, the, um, the year is 1954. Uh, we're in... Uh, Toronto, and our narrator is a, um, uh, a teenage girl who has been desperately hoping to uh, get a job uh, babysitting. So it's one of those um, be careful what you wish for stories. Uh, so this is from the point of view of the teenage girl. Why, oh why, didn't I have a fresh white blouse? For some reason, I imagined a babysitter would wear a white blouse. But when the call came, I only had time to rake a brush through my hair, jam in a poodle barrette, and change into my least dirty turtleneck and slacks. I pinched my soft inner arm into a rose, into real, that it really was my turn at last. I wouldn't have heard the phone at all if the moat, the tiny fuzzball from a pilled sweater or a seed pod fluff or something hadn't sailed in through the window. I'd cracked open ever so slightly to ease my bedroom's stuffiness. It drifted as if choosing a landing spot, then landed dab smack on my new spinning vinyl record. Snagged in the stylus, the cordettes, Mr. Sandman, furred and slurred. The dream those divine singers asked Mr. Sandman to bring them ground down to bang me a drum. To pluck the fluff away, I'd lifted the stylus, and in that songless second, the telephone clanged in the kitchen. I hot-footed it there. If my mother and I lived in a house instead of a flat, I wouldn't have made it to the phone on time. But I only had to dash a short stretch to answer the phone. A satin voice summoned Sadie Wilder. That's me. I mean, she, I burbled. The caller was Shirley Bannister, the Shirley Bannister. I already knew all about her from my friend, Wanda Keeler, the Bannister's official babysitter. Oh, I'd heard about Shirley, pretty wife, baker of pineapple upside-down cakes, her dashing husband, Forrest, who fetched Wanda and drove her home in his Austin Healy, 
and tossed an extra coin her way at the end of each night, raising her babysitting fortune to four dollars, and winked. Later, Gator. Wanda never once fumbled the coin. She rode the gravy train. Mm. So we've already got some small things in there, some lovely little details. Thank you. So this is your second novel that yes. you've had published, and and <clears throat> do you do you work between poetry and fiction still, or do you take on one project at a time? How, what's your process? I like to have more than one project at a time, but um, I've, I think I've become a bit more linear, and and I, I it, it probably relates to the sort of um, um, windows of time I have to write, which mm -hmm. you know. Um, make me kind of tend to now focus quite a lot on on one thing, but I'm I'm um, I'm, I'm happy when I'm I'm dabbling in a few projects. So I, I may I may pick something else up. It's nice to make lateral slides between projects. I find mm -hmm. sometimes you just need a break from a project if you're stuck, or maybe maybe I'm just an unfocused person. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Now, when you were when you were working on this novel, was there anything that that really delighted you in the process, or anything that really surprised you as you were working on it? Um, I love the research. You know, I, I just I just love the research. So going through old newspapers and being in the archives. Um, a part set in 1954, so I had to you know do world building in the 1950s in Canada, and I just love that stuff. I, I pour over a, a Chatelet magazines from the 1950s for weeks and probably and not not right you know because I enjoy the research so much so that's that's just that's just so much fun um, and it, it can uh, become a lovely way to procrastinate from the writing but it also it puts it in your head so that you can yeah. you can live in that time and, and yeah. then and give it to us as that gift knowing more about it than than you'll ever tell us but it's still it's um, it, it does make it real for us as readers yeah, I, I think that the research does that. And uh, you know what they say, it's the, the old iceberg, right, with the research, like nine-tenths of your research will be unseen below the surface, and then that little tip of the iceberg is the research that actually makes it into the final book. But it's it's all kind of still there in, in, a, in, a, in a kind of mysterious way. And I've, I've heard you read other scenes from this book at uh, McNally Robinson, and, and uh, it, it really, the, the character of the young girl is such an interesting, uh, an, an interesting person, a little bit of a misfit, but she, she's endearing. I hope so. <laughs> now, do you, um, do you have specific types of characters that you like to write? Or? I have tended to default to, um, to youth characters, um, which... Um, in, in a certain way, kind of surprised me. I mean, that's a, an intergenerational story, and um, the, uh, the 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 character that I found most challenging was the um, the the eldest character, which I, also kind of surprised me. I just thought, you know, think about your mom and you know, lots of wonderful um, ladies in, in that age group. Just just try to, but yet I it was um, didn't come as naturally to me as. Um, some, somehow the um, the younger the younger characters and I I found the character who's most like me the, the absolute most difficult so mm -hmm. it's all kind of strange to me well and it's all it's all a learning process yeah but we're we're out of time so if you can just tell us where people might be able to find your book yes uh, well for sure um, Natalie Robinson um, Amazon um, um, me, <laughs> um, but uh, uh, chapters, indigo, you know the usual, the usual kinds of uh, usual places. Well, Jeanette, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you and mm. and hear a little bit about your about your writing and and the book. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I'm Danica Lohr, and this has been Lit Happens. You can find past episodes on YouTube. You can find me on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. If you have an idea for a show or if you're an author who'd like to talk to me, please contact me at danicalohr at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.